have to sing that fashion academy trend. Eh? This lesson is going to teach us how to make this music the slang of it. We are seeing on the screen. And for us to achieve this particular trend, the roughest we are seeing, you can see, I'm taking use of the following fabric. So I'm going to make use of this satin fabric you are seeing. I have two colors of the satin here, the purple satin and the peach satin. So I'm going to make use of this as my base, then I'll use this for my ruffles. Now, another important thing I want to bring to your notice here is that I'm also going to use my pepper stay, okay? This is not an air stay, it's a pepper stay. Okay, so when purchasing, you can ask for a pepper stay. So I want to use this pepper stay to enhance the quality of this, the base of this ruffle. All right, so now the very first thing I'm going to do right now, I'm going to mark out this base. So let me show you how we do that. To cut the circular base for my ruffle sleeve, the first thing I'm, I did is to place my pepper stay on this satin just as you place your hair stay the air, the pepper stay has the shiny part of it and the rough part of it so you place the sticky part of it to the hair stay just a, to the satin just as you hair stay your fabric that is the same way you use your pepper stay on this okay so now you can see this is the fabric this is the front side of the fabric and this is the back side of it which i have placed my pepper stay so now i picked a quantity the length of the fabric that will be very comfortable to achieve this base without wastage or having so much excesses okay because i um, the base of this sleeve is going to be eight inches from one end of of it to the other where you are going to attack this sleeve is going to be eight inches you can also make it nine inches but eight inches is very much good so now that i have this eight inches as my length just as we cut our peplum okay the method you cut your peplum or your flay we are going to use that method to cut out this circle this circular base so now i need two of this circle this um, base okay so what do i mean just as i have a circle okay i need one two of it because i'm going to sew around that circle turn it around and place our, our ruffles so i'm going to fold this i want you to watch how i'm folding it first of all this is what i have okay so you choose a desired a desirable length so i'm folding it into two you can see it's on fold right now i'm going to fold again can you see how I'm doing that? So I have another edge right now. Can you see that? And I'm going to fold it again. Can you see? All right. So this is what I want to achieve. So that is exactly how you are going to fold it. So now see, I have this point. You can see this point. That is the point on fold that I'm going to take my measurement. All right. So let me place it this way so that you see what I'm doing. So from this point, just as you cut your fl your flay or your peplum, so I'm going to take from this point. Remember, the total length of this circle is eight inches. Eight inches divided by two, we have four. So I'm going to add 0 0.5 seam allowance to my 4 inches, which is 4, 4 and half. So I'll be moving this 4 and half. Can you see how I'm moving it? Because I want to cut off my circle. So you ensure you have your tape at the tip. Okay. So I want to cross check if I have my 4 and half accurately okay make sure you have this one have accurately placed so that you have a very a, an equal circle all right
right so you can see i have my four and a half all through this as you can see uh, the measurement so the next thing i'm going to do right now i'm going to cut off my circle okay so i'll be cutting off this circle exactly at this line of my 4.5 inches okay so you can see i'll discard this now i have my circle can you see that all right so and i have two of it you can see this is one and this is two so at this point you can see i also oh, i already have the crease line so at this point i'm going to find out the center this is the center of the circle can you see that i make a mark to it so next i'm going to sew my 0 0.5 inch all around this circle and i'll be leaving three inches at this point to turn this circle so let me sew it so you can see these are my stitches around my circle and now i left three inches as you can see from this point to this point this will enable me to turn it so but before i turn it i need to make my notches you know this is a circle i want to have a smooth turning so i need to notch them okay so i'll be notching you can see i'll be placing my notch So you can see I have my notches to so enable me to turn this circle. So right, right now I'm going to turn my circle right now. So you can see I've turned the circular base right now. And I've also sealed the 3 inches where I turned it with my hemming gum. So remember we have the center of this circle. Remember when I made a little mark. For the center of this circle here and from that point of that circle i placed my ruler to have this cardinal line so now this is the center point of this circle right now and i'm going to place my measurements where my ruffles will be at seven points 0 0.75 5 inches you can also make use of 0 0.5 inches what do i mean that by that so from the point the center point i'm going to place my tape and i'm going to make a mark of 0 0.75 i'm going to do the same at this point just i want you to watch what i'm doing and at this point i have 0 0.5 and at this point 0 0.75 sorry and at this point i have my 0 0.75 so right now i'm going to connect from this point can you see i have my connection here and to get a good circle there i'll also place at this point to the center at 0 0.75 or three quarter so I am connecting at this point as you can see you can see how I'm rotating okay making sure that my my chalk passes at that 0 0.75 at this point I make a mark at the center of 0 0.5 again so I can have a very good circle can you see that coming to this point I'm going to also measure 0 0.5 can you see then I'll connect the 0 0.5 back to the 0 0.5 on this line I believe you are seeing what I'm doing and coming to the center I have my 0 0.5 again this is what I'll be doing all right now from this circle this little circle i made at the beginning i'm going to place my tape to get 7.0.75 so i'll keep taking the 0.75 starting from this 0.5 the first 
I'll connect back to 0 0.5 or 3 quarter. Coming back to this circle, I also make a mark of 0 0.5. Can you see? Placing my tape back to this, the initial circle I've made, I'll also connect to 0 0.75. Then at this 0 0.5, I'll place my tape again. I'll make a mark of 3 quarter or 0 0.75. Connect. Alright, so you ensure you have 0 0.5. You come over here. You have 0 0.5. Then you connect, trying to get a circle. Then at this point, 0 0.5, I'll connect. Can you see I'm already forming the spiral? I'll come to the center. I'll make a mark of 0 0.5. 0 0.75 or 3 quarter back to this point. I'll come back here. From this point of the initial circle, I'll make a mark of 0 0.5. I believe you understand what I'm doing here. So this is what I would do. 0 0.75, 0 0.75, all through till I exhaust this circular base. Now you can see I've exhausted this circular base, okay? The distance is 0 0.75, which is 3 quarter. Please, not 0 0.5. Unless you want to make use of 0 0.5 distance, okay? From the starting point, you take a measurement of 0 0.75 or 3 quarter. But if you feel like bringing your, your ruffles very closer, you can use 0 0.5. So my distance is, is 0 0.75, 3 quarter, 3 quarter, 3 quarter, till I get up to here. Okay? So at this point, you can see, I, I need to connect this point to this line. Okay? This, this will enable me to have an equal ruffle so i'm connecting this line from this line to meet up with here can you see so that's how you are going to do that connect it so when sewing my ruffles right now i will start from this point i will sew on top of the chalk line can you see once you get to this point you sew through this line okay so i'm going to demonstrate how we are going to sew this and at the end we are going to terminate at the starting point. Can you see that? All right. So let us go to the ruffle. So I'm going to make use of this satin, peach satin for my flans. Okay. So I'm going to ruffle this flans for you to see that effect of the beautiful sleeve on the screen. So I'm, you can see I have this uh, peach on fold. You can see. So it has to be on fold. Can you see that? Okay, so having folded this, I need to also fold it again to create my crease line, which is the center of the ruffle. You can see that. So I'll go to my ironing table to create the crease line. All right, so you can see I have my crease line. Okay, my vertical, my horizontal line meeting at this point. Okay, so this is the point is meeting. So with my ruler, I'm going to make the horizontal line at the point of that crease line because we want to create a flange. And this flange is going to be flange of 2.5 inches. Okay, but I'm going to add 0 0.5. Alright, the length of my flange is going to be 2.5 inches, but I'm going to add 0 0.5 inch to it, making it 3 inches. So now that I have my line, you can see my horizontal line. I've created it with my ruler. Okay, and there I have my vertical line. So from the point of the vertical and horizontal line, I'm going to take three inches from that the starting point okay that is the width of this flange 
I'll also do create three inches this is to make sure I have a circle at the starting point, okay? Because I'm going to take my... All right, so you can see that. So now from this point, I'll also place my tape at three inches because I want to get an accurate circle. So I'll be creating my circle right now to meet the three inches. You can see that now i'll come to this center this is my three inches and i'll connect it from that point i'm connecting to these three inches all right so you can see i've completed my circle right now so now that i have my circle i am going to take this circle all around to form a spiral but then i have to come to the point of the starting point once again you know i have three inches i'll be taking half of the three inches that is 1.5 and at this 1.5 i'll come up by 0 0.75 so at this point i will be connecting this point from this point to this point okay passing through through this line can you see that back to this line this will serve as my starting line so at this point of my starting line i'll use my ruler divide this circle into two okay then i will have now so you understand why i'm doing this okay so now at this line i have three inches can you see that three inches to the starting point i'll be following this line to create my starting point for this flange so at this point i'll be measuring three inches you can see that at this point i have three inches okay all right so from this point i'll be connecting my line to the three inches i'll connect to the three inches okay now i'll place my three inches i'm placing my tape on this line please take note okay now from this point i have my three inches at this point I have my three inches okay then I'll connect it all right then from this point I have my three inches I'll connect to this point at this point I have my three inches I'll connect this line to my three inches so if you look at this point this is the starting point of this flange and you know how i got this too so this flange is taking i'll be coming through this way taking this shape okay don't worry when we'll be cutting it you'll know why it's done that way so i will take these three inches from the point i'll be going around it from the circle already formed i'll connect the three inches I'll keep placing my three inches on the circle this way and each time I place I connect the points you can see my connection so I will take my three inches three inches coming to this point let me show you what I'll do at this point this is my three inches so if you look at here you can see you have two lines one and this is the starting point so we are not making use of this starting point can you see i'm canceling this starting point okay that helps us helped us to create this line so we are not going to make use of this line so i'm going to place my tape on this three inches can you see three inches okay then i'm going to connect the three inches i'll connect this to this connect this to this so i'll keep taking three inches three inches three inches till i exhaust this fabric 
all right so you can see i've exhausted this fabric right now you can see i took my three inches starting from this point three inches three inches all around till i get to this point and at this point you can see i have no fabric anymore so i'm going to stop at that point then i'll connect with my ruler that will be the starting the end point of this flange okay so the most important thing is to know how to start okay that is the most important thing you remember i first of all made a circle of three inches and i divided this part into two because i have three inches half of it is 1.5 inches now i came up with 0 0.75 connected this point to this point to this point like a parabola okay so now at this point i now have my straight line connecting to the circle to enable me cut off my flange in a circular motion so now i'm going to cut off this flange right now and remember it's on fold because i need two pieces of it one on top and the other below to stitch it together so i'll be cutting my flange starting right from the end point you can see the end point but i want to mention to you i want to say something about using your paper stay just as we did in the starting point of this circular you remember i stage sorry i placed my paper stay front and back before i stitched so if you want to also place it to give it a, a, some volume that would be fine but for this, I don't want to because I have a thick satin here already. You can stay, you can use your paper stay, whichever way is also good. But for the demonstration of this flange, I'm not going to stay nor add my paper stay. So I'm going to cut off. Watch how I'm cutting. And also make sure you have your pin secure. Since it's on fold, so it has two pieces and you know satin sometimes can misbehave. So please try and pin them hold it in place so look at how i'm cutting please watch having cut here i will now start cutting all the way from the outer circle so you can see i've gotten to the you can see this is the where i started okay and i have to cut it off you can see how it's looking so now i have my circular okay then at this point i started you can see how it is so from this point i'll start the business of the day which is the flans So you keep cutting to create your flans, following the chalk line. Like I said, you still need to hold with your pin to, so it, it doesn't move up and down. Okay, so you keep cutting i want you to pay close attention to this point can you see so at this point you cut off through this line can you see that this is the starting point and then you keep cutting through this line can you see that that is why we did what we did at that point i told you so getting to this point remember this is not part of it so you cut off through this point can you see and at this point we discard this we don't need this we discard it 
all right you can see the flowers right now you can see it in a spiral form so beautiful as you can see so what is the next action i'm going to take you see it so i'm now going to turn remember this is the front part of this flowers so i'm going to turn it to the wrong side okay so i'll turn it to the wrong side then i'm going to run my 0 0.5 stitch we are my stitching i'm stitching the outer part remember i'm not stitching the inner part because we are going to attach this inner part to this circular base so i'm going to stitch 0 0.5 all around on my machine let me do that okay so now i'm going to stitch the outer parts the outer part of this um flans i'm stitching at 0 0.5 inch okay so i'll be taking the outer part gently can you see that so I'm stitching at 0 0.5. Make sure you have your pins holding your satin fabric. So I'm going to sew gently like this till I get to the end of this flounce. And at the end of this flounce, I'm going to turn it around to the other side before we start fixing to our circular base all right people you can see i'm done stitching you can see my stitches of 0 0.5 inch on this flange right now on the outer part of it but i know you'll be wondering why i have to stitch on the shiny part of it the 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 right side of this uh, fabric is really too shiny for me so I want to make use of the back side of it. You can see the wrong side of it is just very okay for what I want. But anyway, it's your choice. It's not compulsory. You, you must use the right side or the wrong side. Okay, it depends on what you actually want. So now the most important thing is to demonstrate how this is being stitched, which you can see I've just, I, I just did now. But now uh, I need to turn this to the front side, okay, to the right side where I'll fix my flans to uh, the ruffle. So I'm trimming it off, okay, trying to trim, trim, trim because I need to turn to avoid bulkiness, okay. Sometimes if you try to, you know, turn this as it is, you will see that it's so bulky difficult to turn and all that but if you have to trim okay but you have to be careful let me zoom my camera for you to see please just be careful so that you don't trim off through the stitches okay so this is the little trick okay i learned to in turning stuff like this to avoid bulkiness so i will keep trimming gently to the end then after which i'll have to turn this flange and start off ruffling it on the circular base now i'm done turning the flange you can see i've turned it now this is the right part of it as you can see right now i closed up the stitches so i'm going to iron okay on my ironing table I'll be ironing this flange right now because I need it. I need it to lay flat. So remember what I told you. Some people might want to stay, or you might want to use your paper stay. Okay, any one you want, just to give it some kind of volume, or so. So you can do that if you want. But like I said, I'm using mine that way i'm using the fabric because the satin is a little bit thick so i'm going to iron from one end to the end of the other flange then we'll start demonstrating how to fix it 
so you can see i'm done stitching my flans okay i've already turned it and you can see it right now from the starting point down to the end point you can see it now so if you look at this you can see i only stitched on the outer part like i said i stitched on the outer part but now i'm going to my interlocking machine i'm going to lock up this you can see it's open i'm going to weave it okay that is what i mean i'm going to weave all through before i start attaching to this circular bin so let me let me weave the inside and hold them together then we'll start roughly all right so i'm trying to lock i'm trying to weave this part right now so as you are weaving Alright people, so you can see I've overlocked my flans. You can see this is the inner part of it and I'm about to stitch on this circular on this circular base. So now I'm going to demonstrate to you how I'm going to stitch. But remember I when drafting this um when try, trying to show you how to take this uh, spiral shape remember we connected from this point back to this point so now as i'm going to stitch right now this flans on top of the circular base for this sleeve i'm going to start my stitching from this point i'm going to stitch going through this way so let me demonstrate it for you to see all right so you can see i have my circular base now so i'm going to start off from this point okay so let me just show you what i mean you can see i have my overlock I've overlocked this uh, flange. So I'll be starting at this point and I'll be coming through this way. I will take it all around till I get to the starting point. So I'll be placing this at this point and I'll be giving a gap of one inch, one and a half in inches or two inches, depending on you. Then after that, I'll pleat in one and a half inch. You can see how I pleated this. You can pleat this way. You can also pleat this way. It depends on what you want. Okay, let me go pleat this way. Then you can have a box pleat or any kind of pleat you want. After one and a half inch interval, I'll pleat in another one and a half interval. I will give one and a half inch again. Then I'll pleat in one and a half inch. Okay, you don't need to measure it at all. You understand? You just use your description let your creativity your creativity guide you so you can see i will do i will have my stitches all through this way let me demonstrate it for you to see all right so on my machine now i want to demonstrate to you what i was explaining okay so with your description you have to know where to to um, to stop your 1.5 inch and pleat in another 1.5 inch so you keep going this way can you see that then after another 1.5 you also pleat you can also take two inches it all depends on you anyway it depends on what you want but the most important thing is to show you how to achieve this so I will keep doing this, taking it in a, in a circular motion, gently. So you keep pleating on this line. You'll be following the chalk line. Okay, at the interval of either 2-2 two, two inches or 1.5 inch. And you pleat in at 1.5 or 2 inches. Okay, so you keep stitching like i said you can make a box pleat you can make an ordinary pleating it depends on what you want but the most important thing is that you have to make sure your spacing is equal you don't need to measure it you have to use your 
sense to know how or where the next splitting will fall okay but make sure one is not bigger than the other so i will keep doing this i'll keep turning this till i get to this point and at this point i'm going to follow this line as you can see and i'll stop at this point and i'll make a little rose to it i'll do it for you to see okay so you can see what i have as my my sleeve you can see i've ruffled okay this is the back how it looks like i went all around following the chalk line so now you can see i stopped at this point to show you what i mean okay so i still need to go you know turn around and terminate at this point so i'm going to pleat this in and uh, to form a rose okay so on my machine i'll pleat it okay give it a fine pleating okay and at the end of the day i will terminate okay with like a rose okay just try and do something nice at that point but you you will see how i'm going to do it now so at this point you can see i've terminated at that point but now my machine can no longer sew because if i act if i tell you that you can sew on your machine right now while forming this rose that will not be true so what am i going to do right now i'm going to place a little gum at that point can you see that so i have to put a little gum at that middle can you see so once i put a little gum at that middle right now the next thing i'm going to do is to gradually form the rows can you see i'll gradually twist it and then hold it on hold it on at that point you can see that so you can see I'm done with this beautiful ruffle sleeve. You can see how beautiful it's looking there already. Let me zoom my camera for you so, to see the finished product. So you can make use of this sleeve anywhere. You can place it anywhere on your off shoulder and all that. So you can see how beautiful it's looking already. Okay, you can attach it anywhere you want to attach it. Okay. You can attach it on your off shoulder or anywhere as you can see on the screen you see where it is being attached this is so beautiful so if you love this content please kindly subscribe if you are new to this channel turn on your notification bell to receive videos like this each week give this video a thumbs up and i also want to bring to your notice that we have our online classes on whatsapp you can join i'll be dropping the link on the description box below and share this video to family and friends also join us on facebook on simbright fashion academy and also on whatsapp okay thank you very much for watching see you in my next video bye